So, I wanted to mention a few things. I think, um, Nick, you're onto something when we have to figure out some type of a, a purpose or greater meaning that we can pass on to our children without having to lie to them um, or make up some fancy happy story when it really it's not so happy or at least it's not that simple. Um, that's a very um, intelligent guideline to try to maintain um, that we have to be able to pass this on to our children. But I think one of the easiest assumptions to make these days, the easiest projections or anthropomorphizations or assumptions that we make is that we say that out there, everything outside the human brain is chaotic. And why do we say that? Well, because after we got rid of God and we learned how to engineer nature and we understood the order in nature, which is strange because we say sometimes, you know, a materialistic type of person, a scientific materialist, will say that nature is composed of laws, order, laws, but it's also chaotic because evolution is just blindly marching forward and whatever new adaptations arise, well, it was on accident. And so even, even in the materialistic view, nature is not entirely chaotic. There is a, um, you know, I say a spontaneous process. Gary Amendum doesn't like when I say that word, but I don't understand why. We can't predict where nature is going. Um, you know, when we go back to the beginning, when there was only light, the Big Bang I'm talking about here, there was energy and light, and then that spontaneously became matter, and that spontaneously became stars, which spontaneously um, became solar systems and planets, which generated life, and then it evolved into higher organisms, and all of a sudden we have language, and and mind and technology so this is a, a process that we couldn't have predicted from the beginning you know when there's just a bunch of energy we couldn't have known that it would eventually become intelligent life or quasi intelligent life if, if you're not too keen on the idea that humans are as genius as they think but we, we shouldn't project our feeling of isolation and alienation and loneliness onto the universe. Because when we say that it's all chaos and it's all uncaring and unintelligent and stupid and blind, we're just projecting our own shadow onto nature. And it's and in a sense, it's because we want to empower ourselves. We want to say the human subject, the ego, my consciousness, my consciousness is all that can create meaning, is all that has imagination is all that's that's really here and aware of itself and you know I think that is is an illusion we're putting ourselves into that position because of you know hundreds of years of cultural evolution and, and we've had to go through this this stage of sort of wiping the spiritual slate clean you know getting rid of the old outdated traditions because they were too dogmatic and they were they were in the hands of, of um, powers, people with power that, that weren't necessarily um, democratizing the true value of these religions. Because the true value of a religion is the experience of that religion that frees you as an individual, not that um, forces you to congregate with, with huge masses of people to worship some figure, whether it's the Pope the Roman Empire, empire or, or emperor, or, you know, whether it's nowadays the president or your flag or, you know, whatever it is, these are still based on the same religious models that the church used, are all of our patri patriotism and, and celebrity worship, it's the same thing. We need to move away from all of that, from that um, worship of others, worship of something higher than, than the self, but we're not talking about the ego anymore. And, you know, to get back to what you were saying about being able to pass this on to our children, 
I don't think we should have to teach our children anything. I think we should be learning from them because they're the ones with the clean slate. They're the ones without any any um, traditional dogmatic beliefs ingrained into them. Um, you know, because a lot of uh, even even I was raised with with a certain amount of um, religious dogma thrown at me, and. I wasn't convinced by it for whatever reason. I mean, I went to church and, and it was a drag, and I, I realized, you know, what is this all about? This isn't uh, my idea of, of expressing my inner spirit, you know. But I think children, before we even start trying to um, ingrain into them any type of specific belief system, they're naturally creative and they're also naturally curious so you're right they're gonna be asking questions and we have to figure out how to answer them but I think if we are open to their questions they will lead us in the right direction and you know I don't really have any doubts about this and you know I've talked to some people about this already and they sort of think it's naive to assume that you know the, you know, the poor innocent children will just know what to do like they're some magical angels or something but you know it's not all high fun like that it's as simple as older people adults have all this culture ingrained into them already they're all they have all these programs flying around whereas children are more open they have more hard drive space available right they are less dependent on specific ideas that they've grown to live with for many years. You know, they're free and they're open. And they can lead us to the right kind of a purpose. Because we can't have a purpose anymore that's fixed. Um, you know, I was, I was listening to a lecture by um, Irwin Laszlo. Irvin Laszlo last night. And he talked about the difference between a teleology and a teleonomy. Teleology is the is the general sense of purpose that we've been talking about, like a goal at the end of um, you know this path of development that everything is striving towards, and it seems like we can't really find that. But then there's teleonomy, which is what Laszlo described evolution as. It creates its own goal as it goes along. Um, so it's always a self-directed process. It's not, you know, lots of times it seems when we are especially um, <clears throat> reserved about the human experience and we say, oh, we're just lonely, isolated people on, you know, a pale blue dot in the middle of vast empty nothingness and it's all meaningless and we try to, you know, come up with some kind of meaning, but usually it's all just a subjective projection or fabrication. Um, as opposed to that, teleonomy is not just present in the human. It's not just the human that creates its his own or her own purpose, but it's nature itself. Nature itself directs itself. Nature itself creates itself. And that is a different kind of purpose that requires a lot more openness because we can't ever arrive at a final answer, a final purpose, and say, you know, here it is. Uh, God is in heaven, and we can write it down in a book and, and pass it around to everybody, and it's solved for all time. Can't have that, obviously. But that doesn't mean we're here for no reason. And, you know, Gary... You were talking about Gary and how he, he still believes in evil, even though he doesn't really believe in good. Unless it's people choosing rationally to do the good, the rational good, the logical good. And, um, you know, you said that the, he still believes in the devil, basically, because the devil is chaos, and he thinks we have to fight against that. But usually I, I thought of the devil as the calculating, manipulative, intelligent force. Because, you know, the devil wants to make everything fall into his hands perfectly, right? He wants to uh, plan it all out and, and, and calculate it all. And, you know, God, the angels, heaven, I think they're more spontaneous, you know. 
and open and creative.